that was when the real, exactly. real game started. Now going onto this, Nova defense first, we eternal starts, the attack first, and uh, unless there's a double cap in terms of snowballs and we eternal do dig their heels in, I think the defense should be pretty good. And that's the thing we've got to anticipate here just based on the difference in the game mode. Look, we are eternal's defense is already a proven factor. Even on control, it was the same kind of deal. Once they were in control of the point, they didn't lose control. Their defenses were very ironclad. I'm expecting that to carry over. Funnily enough, Guess what? to Assault. We saw this oh, last week we versus AVE Esports. Did Nova know this is coming? Because it's Amgear on the Symmetra and they're gonna teleport everyone directly onto the point. This is such a smart maneuver, especially with this Bastion Bunker comp. Oh, 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 oh denied! Excellent pop up in the air there to stop up that teleporter and they're not gonna be able to pull the same trick twice. I think we are eternal, might just move back and reset. Well, they can't do that because Kana has been caught out. Kana actually went through the teleporter. So they're in a sort of position where they did have a bit of a commit. Can they still go for this now? There is a world where actually Amgo has to change and we are eternal have to give up the Symmetra strategy altogether. It's already been found out. It's already been seen. And one can just pop everyone up with the rising uppercut again. Kind of consider just, you know, shooting out for a bit to reset. Takes too long. It was exactly going to take way too long. You're going to lose too much time. They may just, yeah, they're actually just resetting completely here, changing up the cop together, not going to try the same trick twice, but Nova in that time have charged up ultimates. And this is where you do have to respect the decision. They've already lost a bunch of time, one minute off the clock. We're eternal game. We just have to bite the bullet. Just have to be the better man here. Try and get this dive in, or at least the rotation. Ooh, does survive for the time being, but now Khan takes some pain. They've managed to get safe for now. Need to take some time to heal up, though. And Blue's already got this tank form. I actually don't really value the tank form against Goats. He actually does a lot more damage in the uh, sentry mode. Does already take down Graze. One's nearly on Meteor Strike as well, so things are not going too well for Weir Eternal Gaming. This might just have to be a dry push, work on some ults, maybe get a couple out of Nova Esports, because very unlikely for them to actually win this push now. That's the thing, the only way to do that is to, at some point, bite the bullet and find a way to go in. Gonna look to do that now. Kana just kind of takes a wrap around, takes some hurt on the flyby as well. It's gonna be the tank form to come out, so they've at least got that one ultimate out, but it's paying dividends enough for Nova anyway. They charge up some more high-impact ultimates off the back. Blue gets the 3k, and we are Eternal aren't actually much closer to any ultimates of their own. It's interesting that one decided to Meteor Strike in there as well. They just threw both the DPS ults in. Maybe one was going to be enough, but we are Eternal Gaming. They'll have to take that. That was really going to be the goal. Once they lost Grace, they had a 5v6. They knew the only option was to get some ults out and reset for another push. A little bit of a change now. Jasmine and Amgo going into Sombra and Genji, and it just resets the ults again. So for we are Eternal Gaming, still just waiting for a little bit of momentum on their side, but at least they got rid of two DPS ults. They're in an okay situation now. We are eternal making the swaps though. Just means they, uh, they're they still not in a great position for making a cap. It's again a dry push, but they should have a little bit more of an opportunity to get kills without ultimates here. The problem is because there's only one minute and 30 seconds left, by the way, Amgar is gonna just get the flank around into space, but he can't actually get an EMP up quickly enough. If he does get an EMP, he's gonna wait till basically overtime. They charge in. Oh, they actually find blue while that sound barrier is running. This is a bit of a difficult spot now. Nicely found, good pick up. Now, Jungle did use the Transcendence. Oyo still got his as Kana loses the mech. Blue did get raised and dropped back down, but it kind of made that work for them in that time it was available. We are Eternal, is still taking a lot of hurt with that Transcendence. Oyo keeps the rest of Nova relatively healthy as they pull back down onto the point. Amgyo though, he's got a blade available, needs to find the connection. Low. Oh, one finds him. That's now a very tough situation for We Are Eternal. They might just have to back off from this one. They do still have one last fight, at least in terms of uh, time on this map, but they're taking a long time to lose this fight. All right now you are seeing a few members just slowly going down for We Are Eternal Gaming. 30 seconds remaining. They need to reset, but we are going to get that EMP. We are going to get that Dragon Blade, but likely this push is going to go into the overtime. All four minutes will be expended. Blue's on a trace result, which is fantastic because there's no Brigida on the side of We Are Eternal. They're running a pure dive composition, and Trace is going to have a pretty good time against that, assuming that Blue doesn't get hacked or EMP. Oh, that's a good early pick again onto John Wu now. And honestly, where are the response kills? Again, the blade not going to connect. Jasmine finds one. There's the EMP, but run down by Crazy S before he could even follow up on his own EMP, let alone anyone else doing the it's work. Kana did find one. Ison finds blue as well, but a res onto one means they're still in this. Crazy S will get a self destruct off to reset the mech, maybe able to get back in it's it. Amgyo. It even finds Ison with that self destruct. The re entry here from Amgyo needs to pay off big because Grace is already dead by the time he gets there. And Kana loses the mech, but smacked out mid blade. 
by one. It is not looking good for We Are Eternal, and it certainly feels like it's only a matter of time. Overtime ticking away, and suddenly Nova looking poised to make a big comeback. And this is where for We Are Eternal Gaming, punished heavily for attempting to run the Symmetra Strat onto the push on a, again, the one that was debuted against Xavier Esports. And look, it worked against a Xavier Esports, but only once, even Xavier wisened up to it on the third time back. Yes, it went to, well, but the second time back, I should say, it went to double time back. And for Nova Esports, after having learned what we are eternal gaming are capable of on Horizon. I mean, they basically saw that one coming through. You saw the immediately pop up by one on the Doofus as they're trying to get into the teleporter. Everyone got rising uppercutted, and then the Bastion damage just cut through the shields, cut through the members. Khan is already through to the other side. He's now out of position. Things go from bad to worse. One minute's off the clock. They're trying to decide whether they want to change compositions or not, and then they lose a few more seconds. Come out, lose a fight instantly. Grace gets picked off. That's another minute gone. Pretty soon, you're into overtime. That's the thing, We Are Eternal didn't exactly play as smart with their time as they could have, but you've also just got to credit Nova on the defense there. Now We Are Eternal on their own defense, it's been good so far, needs to be equally as good now. They need to fully hold here. And what you do respect as well, just sort of finishing up on the analysis of that last push and the last fight is, the fact that Blue changed onto Tracer was such a good adaptation. He knew he was getting pressured quite a lot as Bastion. Because he doesn't have a Brigida support player beside him, he's got a Doomfist instead. He can't be peeled as effectively. So going onto Tracer, coming back against what was a pure dive and we are eternal, was just so, so good. Now Nova the Esports gonna be defending. Got their own dive going on, playing Blue on the Tracer again. This time though, Amgyo does have a Brigida, so Blue's gonna watch out. Blue will be able to swap that up. Relatively quickly though, if things don't go too well. It will need to be a quick swap. So one has scattered this out. They're deciding that they do want to stick with the tracer, it seems. Actually, no, they're moving back to reset. Yeah, just gonna spot out what the defense is. Knows now that it's gonna be Winston Goats. And it's good to be able to scout it because sometimes it could be a Rissa Bunker Cops, it could be a Widowmaker, it could be a Junker, it could be a number of things. Because it is Goats, you're safe to play a Farah here. Yeah, I really like the Farah. It just for exactly that reason, there is not a lot that can contest this unless uh, Kana and Aysen get a lot of damage and go sky high, but that removes yeah. a lot of the potential defense. Restigo well, taking some hurt in the rotation, and the dive does come in. Jasmine, though, is going to go down. It's not paid off, and already the pressure in Nova off to a great start in this early fight, and this could just be the only fight of the game here when you consider how little progress Nova need on the point. This is the thing, because Blue is still playing his it's own Brigida. If we are Eternal Gaming want to dive in, which they did, and you're right, it is just finished just like that, he's going to get punished straight away. The sh shield bash directly into the kill. That's all they need. It was just one good, well-considered push coming up from Nova Esports. They knew what they had to do. They knew what objective they had to make. Four minutes to get there. Look for what the comp is on the defense. Play the hardest counter that you can find straight off the bat. Give yourself the best chance of winning because you know that the defense just can't change compositions once they're committed. Well, look, we were eternal. They are still at match point here as we move on forward, but thanks to that win, so are Nova. And you've got to say, that was very convincing. It's not just the one-hit wonder on the offense to take it out in a very quick and clean fight. Yep. Losing no members in that, by the way. I mean, it was all just played well. They scattered it out. They adapted, like you said. But then also the defense. It's countering out the symmetric composition. It's really getting a lot out of the Bastion in what is not the ideal composition to be running a Bastion against. And then just being able to continue that defensive momentum plus a couple of arguable mistakes on the side of We Are Eternal, not really uh, maximizing their own limited time on that offense. But when all said and done, Nova just played a better game and deserved the win. And at the same time as well, We Are Eternal Gaming just took a huge gamble. You gotta say, sometimes when you gamble, you lose. And when you lose, sometimes you lose hard. And this is what it yeah. looks like. So there is a world where, similar to what we say about Hollywood, on one side, you do want to credit Nova Esports because, again, fantastic defense, good adaptation, fantastic offense, again, good adaptation. But also, for We Are Eternal Gaming, like, part of them was just the huge mistake of really wanting to commit to the gamble and then being hard punished like you're already in a sort of state where you've debuted this it's very rare to be able to get this kind of very peculiar strat off again yeah the team on the defense would have to not see this coming would be have to be very unprepared for it to work again so that's something they probably should have taken into account and then the sort of just 
blundering around waiting, you know, are we going to wait for the remake? They, they are we going to play the Symmetra and then just finally committing to not? And then just so much waiting, so much time lost, just not giving themselves, honestly, the best chance of recommitting yeah. for another push. And then changing comps again. They came back on Goats, wasn't good enough, came back on Sombra Genji. By the time they had ultimates, it was already overtime. So I think they just gave away that offense, unfortunately. There's the thing. They'd already lost, what was it, about a minute and a half before they even changed onto Goats, which then didn't work just because of how many defensive ultimates Nova had banked up and the lack of opening frags. Back to which the boss is, Bastion. Yeah, even. exactly, exactly. You know, the, the music starts playing and <laughs> you're low on potions. It's stressful. But, uh, but you're exactly right there. And once again, we've got to revisit... Uh, um, I think now, because we move into Escort, we've got to revisit Nova's offense on Hollywood because where it did get stopped up short is one thing, but we did kind of mention before that, look, We Are Eternal never really got a chance to reset. It was like out of spawn, mm -hmm. okay, we're dead again. And it wasn't any fault of theirs. It was just good, aggressive play by Nova. If that's how they're going to be able to approach these mobile games... Um, I'm talking about <laughs> moving, not not, mobile not, not that Diablo <laughs> one. But, uh, but in all seriousness, if they're able to continue that kind of aggression, then we are likely to see a similar result, I would argue, unless we are eternal, again, find those really hard defenses that Nova's been unable to crack so far. And I would argue offenses as well for we are eternal gaming because they still have the opportunity where if they just don't take too many unnecessary risks and they actually get to make a defense play or actually get to make an offense play, that's when you see them really excel. I think both times that you've really seen We Are Eternal Gaming fall over, which is Hollywood, defense A and B, and then most of Horizon Lunar Colony across both, A, but across both attack and defense, is when they just never really got a chance to play the game. Yeah. They didn't get the chance to play this Overwatch game. Just, and part of that is their own fault. Like, they put themselves yeah. in that situation. Part of that is Nova just completely being excellent at excelling uh, I was just using that word a lot, but basically it's excelling at excellent. punishing at punishing mistakes out of Weird Eternal Gaming, whether that's because of you know momentum, they're just pushing towards spawns and cleaning up spawn kills, or reading cheesy plays that they can just counter out. I mean, even just when it's not cheesy, Nova having good reads on the game, they've made good use of scouting so far. We've seen that, uh, that we've seen them do that when they were approaching that A offense on Hollywood. We saw them just Knowledge do it is now. power. Exactly, saw them do it just now on Horizon Lunar Colony, making the change up over onto the Pharah based on what was on the defense. They are just being smart about getting the information and then playing to it. And it's, yep. it is just one thing they're doing a little bit better than We Are Eternal right now. And now, you know, that was a must-win map, by the way. And Nova certainly uh, did that one they quickly. It. it was a very quick must-win map for them. It was a full defense onto A, followed by a one attempt onto their own A push. Now going into the next map, map number four, which is going to be Escort. Could be Route 66, could be Dorado. I'm not too sure if either map really favors any team right now. There's no real star player that you feel like, oh, this player is going to really excel on this map. I feel like both teams have shown a decent amount of versatility that they can play just about anything. They both played bunkers, they both played goats, different versions of goats even. So um, it's going to be a really interesting clash. And now we're sort of back to the stage where I'm not too sure who's going to take it because earlier I was favoring Weird Eternal, but because of how they lost so convincingly on Horizon, again, mostly because of their own mistakes, uh, it's just not giving me a lot of confidence anymore. I'd like to think that even if Weird Eternal had lost Horizon, but it was close, I'd still say going to map four, Weird Eternal could probably take it. But right now it's just a little unclear. One thing I would dare say, though, is I do feel like Route 66 actually might favor We Are Eternal ever so slightly more, purely because of how that point C does lay out and what you tend to run on it. That does tend to be the moment where, no matter how hard rolled you've got on the first two points of Route 66, you will have an opportunity to set up a defense there. And when We Are Eternal have had that opportunity, like we've seen uh, and like we've just been talking about, that's when they kind of get things going. They, they are very hard to take down. It takes, you know, the entire time you banked up to do so. And even then, it's not a guaranteed thing. When we did see that on Hollywood, it was still a winnable fight, actually, for We Are Eternal. So I wouldn't be surprised if they take it to Route 66, just for that alone. And I want to outline the stakes here for both teams as well, because these are both Lons teams coming out, from, rump. coming out from week one. Uh, I think the sirloin, sir. I'm not too sure which one you think that is. By the way, map is going to be Route 66. The stakes here are such that both teams are losing teams from Week 1. So the losing team out of this match is going to go down 0-2 in the season so far. And realistically, you need a 3-2 match record to actually get into playoffs safely. 
<laughs> four and one basically means you're in five and oh, you're definitely in. In fact, five and oh, you're in first place. Yeah. So three and two is likely the score that you realistically need. Now, two and three is not impossible, but a lot of a lot of things have to happen in the group for a two and three to be viable. So the team that goes down oh and two now would have to have the next three weeks after this be basically perfect and win all three of them out right now. For Nova Esports, the expectation for this team is probably playoffs for this season. They just barely missed out last season. If they go down 0-2 now, they're at risk of not making playoffs again. If that playoffs comes with such growing pains along the way, the 3-2 against Talon, potentially only a 2-1 against We Are Eternally here at best, you've got to consider could still be more issues for them ahead, but at any rate, we're not even at that point just yet. And we do still potentially have to consider the world where we are eternal winners and kind of throw all our predictions into complete disarray. Route 66 will be the decider. Heading into the final map of match number one today. Of course, we're not going to be able to go to map five because there was a draw in Hollywood. And it will be Nova Esports defending first with the Ryan Goats. And we are eternal attacking first with the Ryan Goats as well. John, we're just going to do a quick scout on the Hanzo. Mirror compositions. The double Ryan is interesting. We have actually seen Ison quite consistently outvalue Nexus in that situation. Blue, though, is the one taking a lot of hurt. Doesn't quite go down, but the pressure is there. Nova haven't really dealt the damage. Nexus. Now they're turning tail and run. Nexus may just go down. Good run down by Weir Eternal. Setting up a route. Look at that. Ice had already had an Earth Shatter. Look at this man. Go on that. Reinhardt. Gong rings out. Weir Eternal off to a great start. You got a really critic grace there as well. You got a great boop on the wall run. Pushing away so many members and really pushing Nexus back as well. Opens up a lot of plays for the rest of We Are Eternal Gaming, who just run in, do a lot of damage, get the full team wipe. Amgo is about to hit that rally as well. And for We Are Eternal Gaming, look at all this free push. Nova still nowhere to be seen until now. They have at least been able to get back in and reset now, but We Are Eternal still charging up all those ultimates so quickly. The saving grace could be blue with a Graviton Surge. Ison did get picked as well. Rally out of one. Crazy S about to lose this mech here. A little bit of a tough break. Kind of throws in a self-destruct. Wants to find fish for some members. Doesn't find any and doesn't get back in the mech either. A little bit costly there. Now Amgyo in trouble. Forces of transcendence from John Woo. Nova. They're staying in this and there's the grab. Double grab, in fact. Go up. Amgyo does finally get picked out. And Nova look like they are beginning to stabilize. Jasmine super low as well. This means that we are Channel Gaming have to start backing off. And this is... Really unfortunate because they had such a great start. Kana with the self-destruct as well. Not remaking was a big issue for him because the self-destruct advantage was actually big. It forces Nova to relocate. It forces them to reposition. We are Eternal Gaming can use that positioning advantage to really get themselves in a better place. But unfortunately, because they lose Kana, then they don't have the Diva anymore. They lose a couple of other members. They get too low. They have to back out. And Nova Esports continue to get this defense on. For the first time this series, Blue is outpacing Jasmine on the Zarya. And that can be a big boon for Nova here on the defense. If they can get another grab off before too long. The real spanner in the works will be this Earth Let's Shatter. Ice and catches Crazy S, yes, Blue and One. But all are going to be able to recover thanks to the sound barrier. Grace going to be able to match with his own. Self-destruct up sky high from Crazy S. Yes, does not find anyone. Nexus needs to preserve his life here. Backs up, gets healed. No kills either way just yet. But Jazz is starting to catch Blue in that ult. Another grab. And Nexus getting picked. Blue needs to commit this and it's got to be big. John Woo's already thrown out of Transcendence, but one's down. There won't be much follow-up. And Blue's still actually chosen to not throw this one out here. They decide that they want to preserve it for later, but it does mean they guarantee the lost fight here. And you see the value of the slightly later gravity, or slightly later sound barrier rather from Grace as well. Just lets We Are Eternal Gaming push in against Nova Esports. Blue only just gets his Graviton Surge towards the end there, but not before members of his team are already down. Puts him in a really difficult place. Do I grab or do I not? If he uses it and they lose, that's a big loss. But if he doesn't use it, there's no chance to come back in that fight. And for Nova Esports, just have to back out. Now they go on to B. Now they start the speed and they still have the scrap. 
They're gonna have to connect it though, and it's a little bit tough. They don't have anything to combo it up with. There's the grab early out from Jasmine, preempting that one. Self destruct in as well. Doesn't get any kills. Nice transcendence. Now the counter grab. Oh, good oh, shatter. The shatter keeps them all safe. Rest here, even going down in the midst of that one. Amgyo, little low, gets bumped back, and Ison is the casualty on the side of We Are Eternal. But these members of Nova so low, and without the extra healing from Rest here, they are slowly seeding ground, getting run down. Amgyo finally gets finished off, but not before Nexus gets traded out. And this is now still tough. For Nova, but the payload's not actually been moving. You're actually in a situation where we are Eternal Gaming have reinforcement advantage. They respawn just a little bit closer, so now they are going to take advantage back on top of the cart. And Nova Esports have to regroup, they have to back out now. They'll be lucky to not lose anyone else. And they didn't lose anyone on that backup. That's good now. It means they can keep scrapping on this payload as it starts to round the bend. They just want to run down the clock, but they haven't fully healed these tanks back up. So we are a still on the front foot. Now all into this grab. Self-destruct laid out there. Finds blue. Nexus was already dead. Couldn't block anything as Jasmine burns down rest your crazy ass takes a dive and Oyo is the only survivor and we eternal gaming are doing a great job of just pressuring out nexus if we look at him he's always being discorded he's just the primary target there once they get him down they're free to do so much earth shadows can come out for free from Ison. they can grab into a lot better places as well assuming there's not gonna be eat from crazy ass and now going into the potentially last fight will be earth shadow does not connect from Ison. that's a rare miss from him self-destruct grab combo Ison goes down Self-Destruct doesn't actually get any kills itself, but Jasmine up on this high ground hasn't really been able to put out enough damage to make up for how caught the rest of Rio Returnal were in that grab. They have to back up. Gonna lose the life of Jasmine here as well, so gonna lose the energy, and that's kind of the other factor of losing your Zarya players. The energy charge that you have, as well as the ability to charge the ult as you're backing out, all gets uh, kind of sent down the drain there. We're Returnal Gaming. Bit of recent here, the card position is still good for now, 1 minute 20 remaining. As long as they don't head into the overtime here, they should still have a decent amount re remaining into the bank, heading into C. Nova only really had this Earth Shadow to go on right now as well, and Nexus hasn't had good connects, but that's a good one. They're gonna collect Grace thanks to that. We are Eternal are on the back foot now officially. This is where that healing really starts to hurt, but losing Nexus, despite that healing, weren't able to keep him topped up. We are Eternal. Still a grab available. Yeah, coming up on an Earth Shadow as well out of Ice and no shield from Nexus to block it. Nova know that they're in a bit of a tight spot, so they look to find Jasmine, but they need to be careful here. Just gotta wait for a couple of respawners. Now We are Eternal Gaming can move in all healed up and with basically an ultimate advantage effect well they got the better alts even if it's even alts on both sides it's gonna be up the blue here maybe he can charge up the graviton surge in the middle of the spike time is running out though 30 seconds remaining there's the grab onto nexus self-destruct thrown out crazy s finds one in the building though it could be big no blocked out nicely by Ison, but Kana does still die in the middle of that. Ison finds a great Earth Shatter. Follow up is there onto Nexus. And oh, shut Rezga. down Rest here. Blue's got a grab, but it's hard to find the angle, and no one's really there to follow up on it. Unfortunately, if he does choose to throw it out again, decides to preserve it. The cap will only be able to happen in the overtime, and Nova, they're deciding that they're happy enough with that. And honestly, if Rest got that sound barrier down, maybe they can play the grab and the Shatter, but because they know it's going to be all for naught, Lost too many members there. Nova Esports gonna back out, wait for the C defense, know that they have the advantages here. It's only gonna be 1 minute 30 on the clock for We Are Eternal Gaming, moving into this final checkpoint. And for Nova Esports, with the scrap, with the shatter, they can win the next couple of fights and then still secure the defense. They've still got the ultimates for it, that's the thing. This is a good spot for Nova as long as they connect. It's just as likely though that Net Blue gets something eaten. Nice that connects. first shatter. Sound Barrier is there to save everyone except Ison. He does get charged down. Nexus still alive in this one as well. They're still holding on to this grab, which may be a mistake. They now lose Nexus, and the fight's effectively even as Jasmine comes up. Oh, his own grab. Blue's looking for the angle, but Jasmine commits first. And again, Blue, too slow to pull the trigger on this. It costs them. We are Eternal, willing to reset. And know that they need to start getting more aggressive with these ultimates. And honestly, the Earth Shadow was fantastic. They got Ison out of there. They could have saved the Graviton Surge, which they did, but they lost Nexus. At that point, that's when they probably needed Grav. That's when they needed to turn around the fight because they lost the advantage. If they had kept Nexus alive, which is another conversation, then they can keep the Grav. That being said, with only 20 seconds remaining, we are Eternal do their backs against the wall as this time the Kana. grab comes out. Kana does find two, but that's two for three in favor of Nova, who still have the closer respawn as Ison gets run down as they retreat. Jasmine, likely to be a very late death here with only 10 seconds remaining. We are Eternal might not get another chance at this. And actually the cart is far enough that it's difficult to contest for We are Eternal. They just have to die for it now. 
not fantastic. Also gets Transcendence, it's probably going to be very, very valuable here, and the Earth Shadow could be still game winning. Nexus took a lot of damage while Blue was wrapping around to get high ground positioning, but immediately went down low anyway. So this gives Weir Eternal an opportunity. They've been able to fully regroup as six. Earth Shadow from Ice and finds a huge number of Nova members. The sound barrier does not save Nexus's life. And now Transcendence from Jun Wu. The Amgyo casualty does hurt them just a touch. And Nova do the closer respawn. So we are eternal. If they don't get killed soon, this will still slip away from that grasp. And Oyo is going to make it hard for them to get those kills. At least while Transcendence is running. Now it runs out, but Jasmine dies as he commits the grab. One is so low, but they don't quite finish him off. They do find Blue, but there's the Earth Shatter out of Nexus. It catches the members they needed. The self-destruct from Crazy S finishing off those last few members. Nova will complete the hold. And Blue just firing up the Graviton Surge as he's going down as well. Very clutch play. Nexus coming back just in time with the Earth Shadow that nearly looked like it was going to be a cap out from We Are Eternal Gaming when Nexus went down at about 88% or something around that mark on top of his Earth Shadow. If he had stayed alive, he has the Earth Shadow in the middle of the fight. Because he was down for so long, it is overtime by the way, which means slower respawns across the board. Nova Esports had to stall for so long to get Nexus back into the fight to finally shut it down, to finally collect that defense win. Now we swap sides, Nova's going to be on the attack, we're Eternal Gaming on the defense, and honestly, Nova's going to have their work cut out for them because it's, this is still a pretty decent offense in terms of total distance. And again, you've got to consider, we are Eternal Gaming, just based on their defense on point C of Hollywood, I would expect that they can get a similar thing here on Route 66, no matter how well the rest of the map goes for Nova. So, it's going to be that closing stretch that defines everyone for Nova, everything rather for Nova. And that also is likely to be where not getting that earlier hold, having the cut go as far as it did, could cost them. What you did see a lot from We Are Eternal Gaming's offense there was a lot of back and forth in terms of winning and losing fights across both A and also B and then on to C. Teams were just trading evenly. Some Nova will win, then We Are Eternal winning fight, and then Nova wins again, then We Are Eternal wins again. For Nova Esports to actually complete this map and win Route 66, they're going to need a much higher percentage of fight wins. They need something like two, three, four fights in a row, get a lot of free push, a lot of extra time to work with. That's how they can still win this. Again, it's going to be Ryan Goat's piece with Crazy S just scouting on the Hanzo. They see Ooh, it. They do spot that one out, so nicely done. They know what's coming. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how We Are Eternal are now going to be able to react to this because Nova are out-rotating them. This is oh, very interesting. This is sick. They wrap around, find them on the flip side, the bottom side of the destroyed train cart. Now just running them further up, but no casualties yet. Actually, Nexus low. Nice catch through on John Wu. And now they start to route the rest of We Are Eternal. I thought We Are Eternal's fight win was quick on that point. A offense. Nova going to do it even faster. Yeah, well, Nexus actually, well, Ison rather nearly got out there if he just maybe walked away a little bit quicker. I think not if he be hadn't case. caught Nexus in the charge, he might have survived. Yeah, maybe. Catching Nexus probably killed them there, but for Nova Esports, just the way with the Hanzo scouting error, you can never really underestimate that one. We're Eternal Gaming. As soon as they saw that Nova Esports were not piling on top of the card, they should have known something was up, and We're Eternal just stood there waiting like, uh, where's Nova? Bam, there's Nova directly in your face. Now, We're Eternal. They need to figure out how they want to reapproach here. They do have a lead on the Earth Shadow. And Ison has connected good ones so far. Rally out from one. It's going to be quite tight for timing on those Graviton Surges. First ultimates are going to be very important here, including this rally coming up from Blue. But we are looking at that Shadow. The Ison Shadow could be the saving grace here. Ooh, doesn't get the connection they need. Mostly blocked out. And Amgyo gets very low as he dives on board. Able to pop the rally, but Jasmine not so lucky to survive that one. And we are eternal on the complete wrong side of this. Completely separated as John Woo gets picked off. And it's looking like it'll be clean up crew from Nova now as they keep the payload going. And they've really only realistically had one shot at that as well. It's a Hail Mary Earth Shadow coming through. Maybe if Ambio can just combo that one up with a shield bash onto Nexus, they can get that shut it down correctly. But Nova Esports, after two fight wins, and this is two fight wins in a row, this is exactly the kind of momentum Nova needs to win. They're going to be able to push through. On to B now, four ultimates in hand, five soon to be from one. And for We Are Eternal Gaming, just trying to charge up a couple of those first ones. Ison's going to be looking at the second shadow, but for everyone else, except for Amgo, it'll be their first. Here's a critical difference. Nova got three defenses on point A. We Are Eternal only got two. Nova have a little bit more time to play with here. That but a huge Earth Shadow from Ison, And suddenly that time differential doesn't mean quite so much. We Are Eternal looking to set up a defense in this choke point. Because that shadow was so huge, it basically makes up for 
the misplay or the miss shatter from the earlier defense there and even the little stagger out on to crazy yes just helps out just a little bit more and in terms of ultimates we are eternal game was so much further behind now that it can match nova esports it's not going to be five ultimates versus five well actually will be it'll be four ultimates versus four and then soon to be five v five so we are eternal gaming have equalized and that's the thing, it means Nova are not in the favorable high momentum position they wanted to be in coming on to be now. And there's the earlier grab again. Jazz was just more proactive, self-destruct board finds nothing in the counter shadow of Nexus. Can't be followed up on, but stops follow up on Jasmine's grab, but Nexus does still get picked out off to the side. There's the self-destruct grab combo on the other side of things from Nova, but again, not getting much, and Amgo for Nexus is Cut's not pushing. a favorable trade for Nova, but you're right, the cart's still moving now. We're Eternal, can't get back onto it, but losing Oyo and that Transcendence means that Nova might just have to seed this ground now. And they get the walk out with a few extra meters Ooh. there. Losing rest here does hurt them a little. They've got to be concerned now. If they lose any more members, these will be staggered deaths. Yes, He's getting low and only Oyo can heal and gets caught up there. Unfortunate indeed. That's what happens when you lose your supports. And now we're Eternal Gaming. Get the setup once again. There's about three minutes and counting down now for this defense. So many more defensive fights need to be won here if we're Eternal Gaming. Want a good shot at actually holding. But for Nova Esports, they have a lot more attempts to go through yet. They do still have a decent amount of time on the clock, but a little bit less than what they wanted. And we are Eternal are actually well poised to take even more time off that clock. Shatter, by the way. Shatter's decent, but mm, there's the follow-up out of Jasmine. It was looking like they might just be able to get back up and maybe rotate into a grab, but no such luck. And now we are Eternal. They keep this rotation going. That ends up being a five-member cleanup as well. Oreo is the only one making it out alive, just preempting that fight loss. It's going to charge up a bunch of the other opponents for We Are Eternal. And this is the kind of cheap, efficient fight wins in terms of economy that was really solidifying the defense onto Hollywood C. So we're sort of getting back into there. Now we're at two minutes. One minute ago, we said there were a decent amount of attempts there for Nova. Now I'm not too sure. Nova. They need to get some momentum going here. That does mean Blue's going to have to commit a grab. He can't just hold on to it. He's got to, you know... Poison Jasmine's up the not right. can go, but there we go once again. Jasmine is the more proactive of the two. Carter connects with the self-destruct. We are Eternal, again taking a fight win, rotating through more ultimates. Nova, they need to be less conservative. We're back on Hollywood C all over again. Jasmine and Carter had that combo down, and look at the other four members. They have their ults again. Last fight it was Ison with Urshida. Now he's got the Urshida back in hand. Everybody else needs or everyone else gets to maintain those ults for Nova Esports still waiting to pull the trigger crazy is nearly on the self-destruct they nearly have the grab combo as well but if after all that time they throw out the combo and it doesn't get exactly what they need then they've actually lost so oh, much time there it is. huge earth shatter from Ison immediately scoops up Nexus but they throw out the combo anyway sound barrier and the shield from Ison keeps everyone safe as crazy yes will not get back in that mech now and that's exactly what I said Nova they waited for that combo instead of using those tools earlier now they find themselves having lost a fight we're eternal more ultimates less than a minute left and guess who's got a better combo Amgear with the shield bash straight into a sick earth shatter from Ison, and now that just gives them such a clean fight when hitting into now a sub one minute mark even if Nova get this they're pushing into overtime they're going into C on overtime as well or rather one minute 30 and for We Are Eternal Gaming still got a transcendence nice disrupt from the wrecking ball they try and bump Ice and Sky high but they don't close out on him Jungle comes to the rescue with transcendence crazy as though gonna continue to wreak havoc here they don't focus him down now looking to barge through again nicely done self destruction Shatter. Earth Shatter. everyone's on their backs Collect two, and the others were already dead prior to that point. Kana smoothly back in the mech, only 10 seconds left. Oh, oh nice and finds out rest here as well, off in the cave. Will not make it out of here alive. Nice run down from Kana, less than five seconds to go, and I think that's gonna be it. Oh, Oyo oh, snuck it out. Will force a bit of overtime. He's gonna Earth die. From Nexus, only got some of the front line. They found John Wu, but they need to get onto the cart. Just barely in time, but where are the kills? The grab, it only goes on to Kana, who gets charged out of it anyway, and only just lost the mech, as Crazy S yes, has died on the payload itself it's such a sloppy messy fight but losing rest here it's still so close to the wire for nova nowhere near comfortable even as they find some kills they lose one and there is a little bit of a respite here as well because we're eternal gaming can wait for some response the cart has not reached the terminus for be just yet more members from we're eternal now flooding back through there will be a final contest here and one, he's only just respawned. He will get back to the point quickly, but there's this tiny little window before he's there. Nice throw down the minefield on the payload, though. 
They do find Jazz in the minefield. The sound barrier has not really landed well on the team. Didn't really get many members, and John Woo gets picked off by one on the back side. Nova, this is a bit of a desperate team comp, but it's paid off for them. They're gonna cap out. And this is where the ultimate economy is disrupted. Jasmine died to mines at 95% charge on Graviton. John Woo dies at about 90% on the Transcendence as well. We're Eternal Game, we just didn't quite have the ultimates available. They're punished. They're now pushed backwards onto C. This is still opportunity for Nova Esports. It's not over for either team just yet. We're Eternal Gaming can still hold out onto C. There is reasonable distance left, and Nova Esports do not have reasonable time to work with. It's Hollywood point C all over again. Certainly a is. great defense that lasted so long, and then finally breaking it at the level. It's a sponge hour. data. Nexus, yet yeah, did not get the connection on that, thanks to the bash from Angio. Excellent micro plays. Needs to find another bash now, so the Isaac can throw it in. Shatter, and it's a big one. They scoop up the tanks and run down the rest as we are eternal. They're looking to just repeat that oh, iron stagger. clad defense. That uh, really sucks for Crazy S as well. This is not the kind of um, offense, unfortunately, for Nova Esports that you can afford to be tanking, losing these fights at critical moments. You have to look at the difference in the Ryans as well. We talked a lot about the other members, Blue and Jasmine, but what about Ison and Nexus? Because Ice is landing some massive, gra massive shatters, rather. Now here they are, just trying to readdress the situation. Nova, they have one shot here. The time is so low, but they could do it with one fight. Self-destruct board from Kana. Doesn't quite land. There's a huge grab from Blue. Good commit, but where's the follow-up? A good rescue transcendence from John Woo. But now we'll soon be Oyo able to match with one of his own. And the shadows there from Nexus finds a good number of members. And goes down. They tried to follow up on Ice and Jasmine in time, but they found some space. Jasmine's grab has to be massive. Throws it in, but Ice goes down. But before they can use him to follow up. And Nova, they last through it thanks to Oyo's transcendence that he had just barely banked up. Grace's sound barrier has run out. Nice pop up onto John Woo. They finish him off. They find Jasmine. They might be able to do it here. Nova, they keep it going, pushing it forward, isolating Kana. Now it's just Grace alone on the payload. And with that, it's Ice and charging in. Lone Wolf soon to die with no pack about him. Grace drops down and the contest is over. Nova, make it happen. And I gotta say, we've talked about this, the difference between this map and Hollywood, and guess what? On Hollywood C, it was Nova East was able to push through and complete the map, and over time, on Route 66, the exact same thing is happening. They lose a lot of fights in a row against that solid, solid defense from We Are Eternal Gaming. The ultimate rotations, the alt economy usage from We Are Eternal Gaming is so solid until it's not. And when it's not, and Nova East was able to break that chain, they're able to break that cycle, and they push through they come through with the with blue or rather one coming through on a doom first and coming crazy s on the Hammond as well just disrupting that defense throwing curveballs at weird eternal gaming they fail to identify and adapt to that properly and the real risk here is crazy as jumps off the demon onto the wrecking ball now you don't have any pressure yeah. against the Graviton Surge on the other side. Now you have no good combo against, or rather with your own Graviton Surge. You don't have the self-destruct anymore. So there is a risk where if Jasmine can come through with a Graviton Surge, he doesn't have to worry about it getting eaten away. He can just place it wherever he likes. And that didn't happen. And guess what? Nova survived. They still push on through. It works out in the end. And they get to now collect and reap the rewards of this victory. Just barely. They had to win both of those in a row. Now look, Horizon Lunar Colony was very convincing. But that Route 66, that, that felt like it, it felt like it was a loss and then suddenly just barely able to make it happen. Thanks to Oyo actually hovering deep behind enemy lines to force that overtime on point B. It, it really came down to the wire. It, it barely gets any closer than that, which means you've got to say Nova deserve it yep. because when they needed it most, they pulled it out. And here's a funny thought that's just occurred to me. I almost feel like Crazy S going off the D.Va kind of liberated Blue. Suddenly he was like, I don't have to wait for a combo. I can just commit a grab. And I don't he think he was waiting anyway. Was big. I, mean, I mean, right, but it, it, was, it felt like suddenly he was willing to yeah. use this tool without having the D.Va self-destruct to combo it with. And it actually felt like things went better for them at that point. I, what it was to me is a lot of slowdown before the... Because what happens is, and I see this a lot in overtime teams, the reason you see a lot of teams really kick it into high gear, once overtime happens, they do nothing for like four or five minutes, and then overtime happens and they oh, win the map. Oh, jeez. And it's because, for, first of all, they know the time's out. It's like, this is it. We, we either do this or we lose. So they just go. Usually, There's no teams, saving it for the Usually next teams are very hesitant, right? So when it's overtime, the hesitation is out the window. And that's exactly Nova's biggest problem. We talked about this at great length. They just don't seem like they want to put the next foot forward. They just 
very, just quite keen to just step back and posture around and wait and wait and wait and wait. Overtime says you can't wait anymore. And when they're not waiting, they're going. Guess what? Nova looked fantastic. Yeah. And it looked like it was over. Racia got caught out, staggered as they were respawning. Oyo had to be the sacrificial lamb just to touch the cart. You're down two supports. It's 4v6. Resty is just respawning now. And with the Hammond and a Doomfist, you're able to turn it back around, snowball through. In fact, they lost the fight straight away after capping yeah. on C. And then they came through back around and won it anyway. It's just incredible. They ju had just barely enough time. And it's, you're completely right. It's the lack of hesitation. Once, it's that, once that's out of the picture, Nova, they do just look a lot better and a lot more comfortable. And here's the thing that is fixable. I guarantee you over the course of this next week, they'll look at that game, they'll pour over it and go, if we had just been a bit more willing to pull the trigger. And I do expect to see them come back just looking a bit stronger again next week. They 